What if you could create more kindness in the world just by being you? Everyone has the potential to create and receive more kindness. What if kindness is more than being nice and compassionate to others? Have you ever considered what having more kindness for you could create in your life? Get ready to learn how the energy of kindness is integral to reducing stress in your life and how it can assist in healing your body. Now, here is the host of Cultivating Kindness with Karen, facilitator of healing, Karen Leslie. Well, hello, everyone. I'm so happy that you're here with me this afternoon. Well, it's afternoon where I am. Who knows what time it is for you? But I'm grateful, regardless, that you're here and you're joining us on the Inspired Choices Network. And we've got roughly the next hour together where we can explore all kinds of things in cultivating kindness with Karen. My specialty is not just kindness, although it is a huge part of my world. It's a really big part of who I am, who I choose to be, what I like to receive from others, what I like to gift to others. And it also is a really big part in me understanding more about myself and my clients. Without that energy of kindness for me, I mean, this is just, you know, Karen speaking, it's actually a little more difficult for me to be truly present. When I didn't have kindness in my world, when it was something that was oh, just too big of an expectation, just something like too lofty to look at, to be able to receive. Now, I've always given kindness out. Um, and I've spoken about that on previous shows and how that was actually a way for me to hide from who I am and just show you a person that you wish to see. And when that started to change, kindness became something brand new, something, something I couldn't even have imagined. And that may sound very strange, and that's okay. Um, if you've walked in shoes similar to mine, if you've had a path similar to where I have been over the last mm, many, many decades, then you may have a sense of understanding that. And kindness now is so important for me to have it every part of my day. And one of the ways that I was able to start looking at kindness was because I became a little bit more curious about it. And that's the topic for today, right? Curious living. What does that mean? And like, why should we even contemplate curious living? Like it's kind of sounds strange or maybe kind of sounds kind of dumb, but truthfully, it was so important for me to become more curious, curious about Karen, curious about my family, curious about the world around me. For without that curiosity, I would still be stuck. I would still be the, living a very small life. Um, I do believe I'd be here. I don't feel in this moment anyways that Adopting or looking at things with curiosity uh, helped me come out of the suicidal tendencies I had. It, it kicked into play afterwards. So for those of you who don't really know who I am, my name's Karen Leslie. That part I think you've got. And I have been uh, an energy healer for over 25 years. That's not as big a part of my world now. My primary goal, I guess, if you would, but my like my deep desire is to work with women. because That's predominantly who seeks me out. I have worked with men and actually currently are. I am working with men, but it's mostly women that are coming forward. And my deep, deep desire is to help you. To never have to stand where I stood. I stood in deep depression, anxiety disorders, multiple. Um, I had a eating disorder that reared its head in the thoughts of it a little bit a while ago. I have been suicidal for as long as I can remember. Uh, 16 is when I actually remember it. But then I actually had a, a memory come up when I was 
still in utero that led me that way as well. So for those of you who can relate to anything I'm saying, it's my deep desire that you don't have to feel that anymore, that you can see what I'm doing, maybe be curious about what I'm doing, and maybe seek out to work with me because everything I do with my clients is based on what has worked for myself. I don't study a modality or study a technique or, or read a book on psychology or brain chemistry or something like that and then just say, oh, cool, let's throw this at my clients and see what happens. Honestly, truly, I work with everything before I even contemplate the idea of sharing it with others. For me, that's being kind to you. Not throwing something at the wall and hoping it sticks. That is not a kind way for me to function. So if you're interested and want to have more information, by all means, get in touch with me. You can reach me through Inspired Choices Network through here. You can come on to the um, podcasts and TV shows that we're doing and uh, join me live in the uh, chat room. It would be wonderful to see you answer any questions you've got. And then, of course, you can send me an email. It's karen at karenlesley.ca. Pretty simple. So I'm always available to answer questions and to have just a conversation if you'd like. All right. So let's look back now, get back on topic here to Curious Living. I look, went to uh, one of my favorite sites, uh, an epidemiology page. Can't always get that word out. I did real good. <laughs> And I looked up what curious meant. And to be honest, I was a little surprised as to what I read. I thought curious was like um, inquisitive, uh, maybe a little nosy, um, seeking information or seeking maybe some knowledge or some wisdom. So I'm going to read a little bit of this to you. So it says eager to know. I can totally relate to that. Inquisitive. Desirous of seeing, that was new. Wrought with or requiring care and art. Not quite sure, to be honest, how I would interpret that. Solicitous, anxious, inquisitive, odd, strange. Careful, diligent, inquiring eagerly, and meddlesome. So some of those words are really not that positive from the way I'm looking at them right now. We think of children as being really curious, right? These little teeny tiny people, and they just like they're wide eyed and they want to explore the world. And they're really interested in, ah, oh, what are you eating? Like, can I have some? What's in that glass? You know, I love that necklace, pull, pull, <laughs> right? Yet I had to watch my earrings. I didn't wear long earrings when my three boys were really little. And it's all just straight curiosity and their mind and their senses, their touch, their smell, their eyes, exploring everything around them. But what do we often do? What did you do if you've had kids and they were young like that? What did you say? The first time they went, one of them went after my earring, I was like, no, no. And I told them not to do that behavior. After that, I thought, okay, this isn't going to work for either one of us. So I just changed the type of earrings that I wore. But my first thought was to say, no, don't do that. How many times did I say that to my boys? Oh, my gosh, haven't a clue. So many times. We often look at curious behavior as being an intrusion, as being inappropriate, as being just like too much. Oh, there's a comment in the uh, chat room. Yep. So many times, right? <laughs> and it's subconscious. It is just a program that as the mom or the adult that you have running that you just go immediately to that. Now, of course, I didn't want my earring pulled and my ear torn. So there was a, a safety perspective from it. But to be honest, my first thought wasn't my safety. It was just, no, don't do that. How many times did your kids have so many questions when they became verbal? Right? We joke about two-year-olds or three-year-olds, like, why, 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 
And we just like, ah, had enough. I, I don't remember too much about my young childhood. Um, to be honest, I blocked it out. It's just not there. And so I'm not sure what was said to me, although I know I grew up in a very quiet household. So chances are, if I was asking a lot of questions or being very loud, I would have been told to be quiet or to stop asking. And I know I've heard from so many people that they have said to me, oh, yeah, I was always told to shut up when I was younger. You ask too many questions. Like, why do you need to know that? And you grow up hearing that. And then you grow up having constant reinforcement that being curious is not okay. Wanting to know more is not a good idea. People don't want me to talk to them. People don't want me to ask them questions. We joke in our house. Um, as you know, my last name is Leslie. My uh, husband is much better at asking questions, but we joke because my three boys don't ask a lot of questions. And I say, like, it's just this Leslie thing. If you'd been just a Penrose and just for me, <laughs> you would have been asking so many questions because that's all I do now. Instilling in somebody now to ask more questions, I'm finding it to be a challenge. I, my boys aren't interested, really, to be honest, in asking many more questions than what they're comfortable with now. And I find it with clients. I'm asking questions. Sometimes I get some answers. Sometimes my answers come through energetically or intuitively to me, and that's really cool. But when I say, well, do you have any questions? Most often people say, no, I'm good. When I check in, I know, no, I'm pretty sure there's a question that would like to be asked, but you're not comfortable asking. That's just all old programming. That's too many years, too many decades of choosing to just not ask a question unless you are really comfortable with the person you're going to ask it of with the type of answer you're going to get back or knowing that it won't create a confrontation. It won't create somebody thinking less of you because you're asking. I love conversations where there's lots of questions. Questions shift the energy. Questions bring life into a situation. When we're having casual conversation with people, and for those of you on audio, like I was air quoting casual conversation, to be honest, it can be really boring. It can be non-stimulating. Non <laughs> We're just left. It can be flat and no fun. Asking a question can shift all that. Asking a question can show that you're actually interested in somebody. Now, you got to listen when they give you the answer and respond to you so that you can continue to engage. But asking a question can be kind for both of you, even if it's a little uncomfortable. You can even preference it. I'd love to ask you something. Is that okay? See what happens, right? We are so comfortable with just taking the information that's in front of us with just acknowledging the thought that's coming to our, our thoughts, our mind in that moment, and not questioning them. If I'm thinking this and I think this all the time, then, okay, that must be the correct thought. If you were told when you were younger that you, you, know, you can be argumentative or you can be a bit of a rebel, and you thought, okay, I need to shift this and change this now, then you may not wish to ask a question and be curious about something that could elicit that kind of response. Okay. Being curious is awesome. We're going to get into it in far more detail when we come back from our first break. But think about how you look at curiosity while we're on our break. What may you have been told as a child that has programmed that has given you the thoughts you have about curiosity are you curious do you have moments of being curious right 
So give that a little thought. And when we come back, we're going to look at this more and we're going to see, so why is curiosity actually a really good thing and how I'll encourage you to bring it back into your life. So we'll return soon. You're on the Inspired Choices Network with myself, Karen Leslie on Cultivating Kindness with Karen. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to karen at karenlesley.ca. Now, back to the program. Well, welcome back. Thank you for coming back and continuing to talk about and think about curiosity and curious living. And I chose that title for a reason, Curious Living, from the perspective that I am choosing, although I'll admit not doing it all the time, not consistently, but I really do believe that curious living, conscious curiosity in what we're doing each day, every day, and at each moment adds so much to our life. It can bring so much joy, learning, adventure. And I know for some, that will be scary. Like it, it was for me. I didn't want to know more than I knew. If I knew more, then it meant I might have to do something with it. And I was not prepared to do that. Now, I had my reasons for that. And if you can relate to that statement, you'll have your own reasons. And it may be, and this may sound not overly kind, but it may be because you are so sure and so confident that you're, you're right, you're correct. Everything you know, all of your beliefs are correct. So there's no need to explore something else. That be honest, from my perspective, that's a barrier. That's a wall that you've put up or a wall that was built for you from the perspective to keep you safe and from the perspective for you to always believe you're right. And if somebody doesn't agree, then they're just wrong. I talked about beliefs a few weeks ago and I said, a belief always has an agenda to it, and a belief separates us. If you have to believe that you're right all the time, no matter what the topic is, based on your opinion of it, and you won't listen to what somebody else has to say, then you've just created a separation. And what might you be missing? This idea of being curious, it opens doors. It breaks down these barriers, these separations that we have in place between people. That can be terrifying. That can elicit a response of fear. And you'll know when you're fearful, right? You'll know when it's not okay when you're anxious, right? You're going to feel 
your, your heart rate start to go faster, your palms may get sweaty, your underarms may sweat, your stomach could start to feel uncomfortable, it could get mm, butterflies or nauseous even. You might even feel like you need to sit down because the energy that came in so strong makes you think that you actually might, um, your knees may buckle or you need to lean against the wall. And that's because you're afraid of something, that that anxiety hit. So you can't have that conversation. You can't change your view with that person. Well, that may be completely wrong. Yep. You may be completely wrong. That may be all based on programming. If you don't know that all of those uh, physical responses that I just mentioned are identical to the physical responses of being excited, and you don't check in and ask and find out what your body is responding to and how, then you will always be stuck from that place of thinking that that person's wrong, they're causing me anxiety, or what they believe in is fearful for me. Maybe something that person said opened up a little door inside you and you actually went, your mind went, oh, I want to learn more. Oh, that's interesting. And then the thought patterns come back saying, nope, 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 close the door, close the door. This is what we believe. But those responses, that, that increased heart rate, the sweatiness, the energy shift in you could be curiosity, could be excitement. But you didn't allow yourself to go there. And I wonder what you could have just missed out on. I did that for decades. I get it. Especially when it came to mental health and different ways people were looking at it. And what I believed worked for me and what I believed would not work for me. And so I kept myself stuck for, I don't know, 50 years or more. So as I said in the first segment, it's my desire that nobody stands in those shoes anymore. It's my, I don't know if I want to use the word calling. Maybe it is. But I know that there's this deep energy inside me that wants to no longer have any other person feel the way I did. That nobody is afraid to live. That nobody is afraid to speak. That they can let go of all of this and start to be curious. Start just a little. And maybe just ask yourself, I wonder what that would be like. Right? Curiosity, being wide eyed and allowing yourself to have glimpses into something new creates a physical response in your body that may be brand new, may be uncomfortable, may elicit all of those symptoms, those physical symptoms I mentioned. And you're going to want to look at them as being anxiety or something that you should be fearful of. A really great exercise, if you would like to do it, is write down, put post-it notes up, stick something on your phone or in your on your bathroom mirror, wherever you want, on your fridge. A reminder that when you feel those symptoms or when you have that thought, associated with, oh, I am experiencing anxiety. Check in. Have that note, that reminder there to actually ask, all right, am I having symptoms of anxiety or am I actually excited about something? And ask it from curiosity. Ask, am I excited? Like, even if it makes no sense to you, like, truly, ask it from a true question. Ask it like a two-year-old or a three-year-old. What are you doing? And see what happens. It is such a gift to be able to allow ourselves to see things differently, to allow that curiosity to come in. 
look at what your regular thought patterns are and your habits. What is it that you always do? You do something the same way every day, regardless, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. You just do it the same way. It's a habit. It works for you. You think it works for you. And so there's no need to look at it and be curious. Well, what are you cutting yourself off from? Doing something the same way for years and years or decades may not be giving you the same benefit that it gave you when you started doing it. You're different. You've changed. You're older. You may not live in the same place anymore. A different house, a different apartment, a different city, a different country. So why would doing the same thing the same way over and over again still be working for you when so much has changed? That was something I had to look at. Doing everything the same way, keeping my world small, not wanting to be curious, and being okay with it was actually not making me happy. It was keeping life mundane. Um, yeah, there was a time when I wanted mundane. I wanted everything the same. But then that started to shift and I didn't know what to do with it. it that was um, at first was scary mixed with massive excitement. But there was a fear factor in there that if I truly open up and I start to look at everything with real curiosity, and I start to wonder, OK, what else is there? What is that going to mean? What will I have to do? So I needed to kind of go backwards and, and basically take an inventory of what I've been doing, how I've been thinking, and looking at them one by one and saying, does this still work for me? Is this what I still would like to be happening in my life? Does this still serve me? I know it did before, but does it still now? Moving your body differently can help as well. So I could have said that, okay, I know it did before, but does it still now? There's not the quite the same energy as when I was actually moving and changing my body. For me, I look up when I become a little more curious about things. And just changing that motion helps me open up to something new. Again, not doing the same thing the same way, right? Looking back, taking that inventory and seeing, okay, where do I want to actually balance out now? What could be more fun? Hmm, haven't thought about fun in years. What does that mean? It's not what's fun for others. It's not what's fun for your family. Although, of course, I can see taking that into consideration. But first, what would be fun for you? What makes you laugh? What makes you smile? What makes you feel like a kid again? Now, again, right, me. That's really um, a screen that's, that's black and blank. So I get to actually define what it might be to be fun to what it might be as a, as a child again. I don't have a reference point. In some ways, that's, that's a great thing. Uh, I used to think it was a bad thing, a negative thing, but now I realize, no, I actually get to write on that blackboard with any color chalk I want, what would be fun? So do you know what would be fun for you? Do you know what is fun for you? And how many other things could be fun that you haven't thought about yet? Now, for some of you, that will be a really silly question. Or you may think, oh, that's really stupid. And that's cool because my, my guess is you're in a place where you know what's fun for you. You are already having fun in your life. You're a little more curious about things. And that's fantastic. I mean, it, it really is fantastic. And what if you shared that with others? Not pushing it on them, but modeling it. Letting them know when you're having fun, talking about what you like to do that's fun, just from that place of not pushing somebody, but maybe opening up a little bit of curiosity in their life. 
do you ever ask somebody, hey, would you like to know more about that? They can say no, and that's all right. And you're, I would hope you wouldn't take any offense to that. But maybe somebody needs an invitation to have that conversation with you. I don't know, just a thought. Think about it. For some of us, fun is really easy. For some of us, fun is a little more of a challenge. And it all ties down really into curious living again. All right, we are at our second break. So we're going to be going into our commercials here. Think about what's fun or think about, ooh, I don't even know how to have fun, whatever it is for you. And can you be a little more curious about it? Again, you can reach out to me anytime you like by emailing me at Karen at KarenLeslie.ca. You can find me in all the different social media platforms. I'm, oh, I don't know, I'm everywhere. Even on Pinterest, which is surprising me these days. So look around, Google Karen Leslie, see what you can find and connect with me. And I would love to have some conversations about anything you would like to talk about, to be honest. So come back after this commercial and I'll be right here waiting for you then. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen, Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Karen at KarenLeslie.ca. Now, back to the program. Well, hello. Thank you for coming back and joining me for the remainder of Cultivating Kindness with Karen. It's so fun to be here with you. It is. It really actually heightens my curiosity. Being here with you brings me joy, brings me new adventures. I'm always curious as to what I'm going to say. I mean, I always have an idea of what we're going to talk about, but I'm always open to what inspiration or what intuition may come forward and how that's going to play out. I never actually know. My, I don't script my shows. Do I have a couple of notes? Yeah, that kind of helps me be a little centered when I start. Once I get going, I don't know, it's a little bit of a free for all. And that is really a large part of that is due to that I'm more comfortable with just being that energy of curiosity, having that energy of kindness as well. So I have the intention that whatever I say, however this show goes each week, that it will be a contribution to you, to myself, and to anybody who listens anywhere around the world. If I wasn't open to being curious, I would be probably a little more uh, leaning towards the idea that I needed to be more scripted, that I needed to have like, far more set points here that I wanted to make sure I communicated with you instead of trusting that what arrives, what I say is actually what you would like to hear. 
I do use also, which I have mentioned before, Oracle cards. Um, they help me design my shows, but I design them weeks in advance. So when it comes to the weekly show with you, I actually have to go back and kind of review my points that I made thinking, oh, yeah, right. This is what we're going to be talking about today. That's trusting in me. Trusting in my ability to stay open, present and curious with you. And those of you listening, I may not see you, although it would be amazing if you came, you know, into the chat room and that sometimes or, you know, next week, whatever you like, that would be cool. But I still get a sense of who you are. I'm able to tap into who's listening. And that is partly from curiosity. That's the willingness to be open to see. So what's out there? Who's out there? And what can I do for you? Right. And sometimes I think say things that are a little odd or like right off the cuff. And that's cool because that is, to be honest, more and more of my personality coming out that I'm allowing the world to see. If it doesn't jive for everybody, that's okay. Not one person is meant to be the right person for everybody. Not one way of doing things is meant to be the only way of doing things for everybody. Could you imagine how boring would our world be? If we all did the same things. We did them the same way. Okay, we all go skiing. We all have the same type of skis. We all ski down the same type of hill. And then somebody goes off and goes down the moguls. And we're looking at them and going, no, 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 no. We're supposed to all ski like this in line. Boring, right? But we judge possibly that other person. And there'll be people that would think, oh, I want to go try that. That looks so much fun. But do they? Right? Do they go against the status quo? Do they stay in line? Do they maintain that belief that this is how we ski? Or do they break the mold? Do they take that risk? Does curiosity and excitement override that need to be the same and that need to be fitting in with this group of people? I was one that would stay in line, ski like everybody else, and look at the other people and go, what are they doing? Don't they know they're not supposed to do that? Oh, I wonder if they're going to get in trouble for doing that. Because I didn't have curiosity and excitement in my life. I wasn't in that place yet to be kind to me, to allow myself to go, I wonder, could I do that? Would I like to do that? Does it look like it's fun? Watch what your automatic thoughts are and your patterns. When you see somebody that does something that's not fitting in with where most people are, you know, together fitting in doing the same thing, and then somebody's doing something else, what is your automatic response? That thought that just pops in like that, that is gold. That will tell you so much about how much curiosity you do or do not have, how much judgment you do or do not have, how important it is for how you do something to be the correct way. It's wonderful information as to how you're thinking. And if thinking that way is really working for you and you really enjoy it, and it does make you really feel comfortable and safe, then keep it. But if another little energy pops up and you're like, what is that? What am I feeling? Allow yourself a little moment of perhaps being a little more vulnerable and check in with that. See if you can explore a little bit about what that is. Maybe a little bit of energy of curiosity snuck in. Maybe you might just like to go and stand at the side of the hill where the moguls are. You don't have to go down them, but maybe go have a look. How big are they? 
Is the person going down? Can you see their face? Are they smiling? Are they gritting their teeth? What are they doing and how are they enjoying it? Look and see. You don't have to participate, but by just going over to the other side of that hill and just looking, you've done so much for you to help open up the doors to curiosity. One, you left the line of the skiers all doing the same thing together. Two, you allowed yourself to have a little bit of distance from that group. Now they're still there, you can still see them. You haven't left them, but you've just moved out just a little bit. You can go back, it's all great. And when you go back, they'll welcome you back, I'm sure. But by just letting yourself look, you've given a gift to yourself. Right? There's a comment in the chat here. Wow, I can't believe how much my curiosity is shut down. Right? I really hear you. Like I was exactly in the same place. When I realized that it just didn't exist for me, it was like, oh, like how do I change this? Do I want to change it? Yeah. How do I go about doing that? Little steps, going and looking over at something. Asking a question to someone you feel safe to ask. Right? And then if you go and look at the mobile hill and you come back into where you were skiing with everybody in the same way, see how you feel when you come back in to where you were. What is your thought process when you come back over? Is it like, okay, that's good. I'm more comfortable here. Or is it, this is fine, but I'm still wondering about over there. Like, listen to your thoughts. Listen to the ones that come in right away before you actually start to think. That automatic thought that pops up. What was it? It will tell you a lot about what's going on. When we choose situations that are similar, over and over again, and they're very familiar with us. One of the things that it can do actually is it can bring you back and lock you in to that spot of pain, to that area in your life that's so uncomfortable that being more robotic and automatic in what you do is the only way you know how to cope with it. Nothing wrong with that. I ask that people just be aware. Curiosity helps us to take us out of being numb. And we, if we have struggles, we do a lot of things to keep us numb. We, we don't necessarily do it intentionally. But the way the mind works, when, it, when we have certain thoughts or activities or actions, that help to numb the thoughts that were uncomfortable due to any form of situation that we've had in the past, the mind's gonna go, okay, we need to do that again. And we need to do that again and again. And when we get caught in constant numbness, you could say you get caught in constant depression. Part of depression for me was being numb. And I don't know if it is for you, if you suffer with depression or go in and out of it. But that numbness was actually preventing me from being able to look at something differently. It certainly kept away any thoughts of being curious about something, doing something different, meeting a new person. Oh, my gosh, heaven forbid, meet a new person. Like, no, keep things small, keep things the same, keep me numb. So if you can relate to any of that, then you can, by all means, stay with that if it's working for you. And it truly is helping you stay in getting through your days. But if there's even a glimpse, a glimmer, a tiny shred of light poking through, that's like, I don't know. Reach out. Let's work together. Let's have a conversation. So much of what I do is helping to unlock those thought patterns that are keeping you stuck. Let's connect. 
and let's see what we can do to disrupt those thought patterns that are keeping you numb, keeping some of that kindness away from you that you and your body are really desiring, but you may not be aware. Those blocks and barriers that are saying curiosity is dangerous, right? Curiosity killed the cat. Oh my gosh, can't go there, right? Okay, we're going in for our third break now. And I will happily be here when you come back and we can carry on our conversation and maybe get rid of that idea that curiosity killed the cat. I don't know where that came from. I think I need to look that one up and understand that better because I'm finding being curious is adding to my life. It is definitely not taking it away. So we'll see you after the break. Thank you so much for being with me on Cultivating Kindness with Karen here on the Inspired Choices Network. We all have different experiences with and definitions of kindness. These experiences and beliefs about kindness have influenced who we are today and how we see the world. The universe is always listening. So what are you telling the universe today? Tune in to Cultivating Kindness with Karen. Each week as Karen guides you to understanding how each choice you are making is either keeping you stuck or opening up the energy of empowerment for you. Listen to Cultivating Kindness with Karen, Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is Cultivating Kindness with Karen. To participate in the program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to Karen at KarenLeslie.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back. Thank you so much for being here with me on Cultivating Kindness with Karen as we talk about curious living. Oh, I've got a comment in the chat here saying the cat always got in trouble or hurt for being curious. Someone is saying they think that that might be behind that idea of curiosity killed the cat. Could well be. That would make sense. And I guess maybe that's why a cat has nine lives. I don't know. <laughs> because they're very curious. And they just need to be able to keep continuing to be curious, right? So that statement, curiosity killed the cat, like that just popped in. But it is a wonderful segue into what I want to talk about in this segment of our show and our time together in that does the idea of being curious create you stress? If you think you're going to get killed, aha, uh -huh, absolutely. I would like to introduce the idea to you that actually curiosity can reduce your stress. You may feel some stress, some um, disruption in your thought pattern, some crunchy bits can come forward when we do that. That is absolutely true. However, I have found that working with curiosity and having me come out of my very firm, fixed points of views on things, that it's opened up a world that feels kinder, that feels less stressful, less anxiety in it. A lot of my stress and my anxiety, and I don't know if this is you, but for me, it was so tied up in not doing something wrong. It was tied into being accepted, fitting in, and also not being seen. So if I was curious and I created some kind of little disruption, that might put the spotlight on me and it was like, oh, I don't want to do that. So trying to stay where I was was actually stressful because I had all these rules as to what I can do, what I really shouldn't do, what would people think? All these perceived judgments I was carrying. Allowing myself to be curious helped to get rid of a whole bunch of that stuff. It wasn't true. I just didn't know that it wasn't true for me. Being curious helped me have a different outlook so that the outcome of what I wanted to learn more about or experiment or try didn't matter as much. 
I wasn't as worried about whether it was going to work. I was able to let go of all of those fears of having to be right and thinking, it's okay if I'm wrong. It's okay if this just doesn't work. Like, what's the problem with that? Curious living gave me more life, gave me less stress, reduced my anxiety. It didn't do the opposite. You may have been feeling the opposite at the beginning of our show today. When I first started to talk about it and suggesting different things, you may have felt more. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned the uh, Disrupt Your Thought Patterns uh, program. It's currently running. It's uh, happening right now. Today is day three of our eight-day program. One of the things I suggested to the people who are participating in it was do something today that you've never done before small. So if you have a favorite mug that you have your morning coffee or tea in or afternoon cup of tea or coffee in, and use it every day. It's your favorite mug. Don't use it. Pick a different mug and see how your response is to that. Open the cupboard where you have your mugs and be curious and say, okay, so which one would be fun to have my coffee in? Pick something different to do so you don't get caught in always doing everything the same way. This disrupts your thought patterns. It's helpful in changing and shifting things. It's helpful in letting you look at curiosity in a way that's gentle. You can use your favorite mug tomorrow if you want, or you can use it later in the day. Try it. Be aware of your thought. Be aware of your reaction to having to reach into a different spot to pick up that mug. And allow yourself to think about what just happened. Just disrupting our thought patterns is really, really important. That's what we've been talking about the whole time on Curious Living. Disrupting a thought pattern that's saying, I can't be like that, I can't do that. Who says? Well. You said, based on something others have been telling you. And what they told you may work really, really well for them. It may not be working as well for you. So much of what is happening in our lives is not based on kindness and curiosity because we choose for it to be the same. We choose to wear similar colors. We choose to have our hair in a similar fashion. We choose to eat similar foods. That's a big one for me. I'm not adventuresome with food, but I'm working on it. I am trying some different things. I am being a little more curious. Instead of that idea that I can't eat spice, I don't like spice. Well, you know what? I actually like some. Do I like it all? Not everything I've tried. No, but I'm trying. I'm curious. I'm allowing myself to check it out. So I hope there's some information you can carry with you to bring curiosity into your world. Next week, we are going to talk about can you imagine a new you? Wow, what a great lead in, right? Curiosity, what could that create? And I'll share with you how it's created a new me how that's worked for me. And maybe you might be able to consider what you might like to change and how you look at you. So come back next week. I will be here live on the Inspired Choices Network with Cultivating Kindness with Karen, looking at imagining a new you. So in the meantime, go disrupt something. Go do something you haven't done before. Open your eyes wide to curiosity. And as always, I am sending you waves of kindness. May they flow through you and support you and give your body and your thoughts and mind everything that you desire and everything to make your day wonderful. So I hope to see you all next week. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for listening to Cultivating yeah. Kindness with Karen. Karen Leslie returns Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. 
You can find Karen at karenlesley.ca and follow her on social media. Until next Wednesday, Karen is sending you waves of kindness for a fabulous week. Remember, it's only you who has the power to be and receive the kindness required to change your life.